Please uh, be seated. Thank you. Your Excellencies, Presidents, Vice President, Members of Council, Past Presidents, Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Deans, Fellows, Faculties, Members and Distinguished Guests. You're all very welcome to RCSI this evening on the occasion of our Charter Day dinner, celebrating our Charter of 1784. We'll commence this evening's proceedings with the award of Honorary Fellowships of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland upon three distinguished guests this evening. I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Magella Doyle, Professor Richard Irving, and Dr. John Mara. I'd now like to invite Professor David Healy, Member of Council of RCSI, to come forward and read the citation for Dr. Magella Doyle, Professor of Surgery at the Section of Abdominal Transplantation, Director of Liver Transplantation at the Barnes Jewish Hospital and St. Louis Children's Hospital, Director of the Transplant HPB Fellowship Program, Director of Clinical Faculty Development, Executive Vice Chair of the Department of Surgery at Washington University School of Medicine. President Viani, Vice President, Past Presidents, Members of Council, Members and Fellows and Distinguished Guests and Friends of the RCSI. Today we nominate Bernadette Maria Magella Doyle for the honour of Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. Many greats from around the world have received this honour, the highest honour the College can bestow. However, very rarely have we taken the opportunity to honour a surgeon born, educated, and trained on this island, one of our own, so to speak. It seems that that bar is particularly high. But today, we have a candidate who is such a candidate. Dr. Doyle works in Washington University, Missouri, USA, and she's a, a surgeon surgeon. She's a hepatobiliary surgeon working in adult and pediatric liver transplant kidney transplant, pancreas transplant. She works in um, liver oncology and a particular interest in transplant and liver oncology. There, as described, she's the chair and professor of abdominal transplantation at Washington University, director of the pediatric program at St. Louis's hospital. And her leadership and activities in many domains have been recognized in her most recent role where she's been elevated to president of the American Association of Hepatobiliary Surgeons. She leads research on organ uh, donation, or organ donor, donor optimization, ex vivo perfusion, preservation, management of uh, liver metastatic disease, and she's the recipient of multiple competitive financial grants for research, and has published over 110 research publications and book chapters. But all this started in Ireland. She was born in Cork. She grew up mostly in County Wicklow, where horses and show jumping were a large part of her life. She represented Ireland in show jumping. She first studied physiology in Trinity College Dublin before a personal brush with meningitis turned her head to medicine. She joined the Royal College of Surgeons Medical School, graduating with honours and medals in anatomy, pharmacology and surgery. She completed her early years in the Matter Hospital and worked with uh, Mr. Jerry McEntee, where she was first exposed to hepatobiliary surgery. She returned to her native Cork, working with Professor Paul Redmond, completing her MD in immunology, a topic that would greatly help her future career in transplantation. After completing her higher surgical training here, she moved on to Missouri on fellowship, and they've never let her go since. There, she's established herself as a leader in that team, an MBA graduate, and a leader across hepatobiliary surgery across all of the United States of America. We hope that this award highlights to you, your family, your husband and children, how highly regarded you are and how proud your Royal College is of you and all your achievements as a graduate of this college.
Thank you. I, Magella, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college. By virtue of my office as president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. We now continue with the second award of honorary fellowship. I'm delighted to invite Professor Calvin Coffey, member of Council of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, to come forward and read the citation for Professor Richard Irving, consultant in otology, neurontology, and skull-based surgery at the University Hospital Birmingham NHS Trust, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, and Birmingham Children's Hospital in the United Kingdom. President Vianney, Vice President, Past Presidents, Members of Council, Members and Fellows, Distinguished Guests, Friends of RCSI, it is with enormous honour that I present Professor Richard Irving for the award of Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Professor Irving is consultant in otology, neuro-otology, and skull-based surgery and honorary professor in bioengineering. He works at Queen Elizabeth Hospital and Children's Hospital in Birmingham. He graduated from University of London in 1985 and trained in London, Cambridge, and San Francisco. He has received multiple awards, including the prestigious gold medal at the Intercollegiate Fellowship Examination in 1996. He has a broad clinical practice, including implantation otology, chronic ear disease, facial nerve, lateral skull base, and vestibular schwannoma. He has over 140 publications and is heavily involved in postgraduate education and training. He is on the editorial board of several international journals. He has worked with the National Institute of Clinical Excellence to generate guidelines in ENT-related disorders. He is past president of the British Society of Otology, past president of the RSM section of Otology, and current president of the British Skull Base Society. Above all, Professor Irving has been a true supporter and friend of Irish trainees down through recent decades. He has attended and contributed enormously to annual Irish ENT Society meetings. We are delighted to welcome both Professor Irving and his wife, Jane, here tonight, this evening. When preparing for the citation, I was informed that Professor Irving is a true, multi-talented expert who is humble and who goes about all of this very quietly. Ms. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you Professor Richard Irving, who I am sure you will agree is worthy of the highest distinction this college has to offer, the Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I, Richard Irving, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college. By a virtue of my office as president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I now invite Ms. Margaret O'Donnell, 
member of council of RCSI, to come forward and read the citation for Dr. John Mara, plastic surgeon in chief at Boston Children's Hospital, professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School, an honorary professorial fellow at the University of Melbourne. President Vianney, Vice President, past presidents, members of council, members and fellows, distinguished guests, and friends of RCSI. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. John Gerard Mira and to propose him for honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. Dr. Mira is a plastic and craniofacial surgeon and also an expert in healthcare economics and outcomes, who has played an enormous role in the development of global surgery with several hundred publications in all of these areas. John attended the University of Notre Dame, as did his father before him. He qualified in both medicine and in dentistry, and then undertook residency training in Boston before a fellowship in Melbourne in craniofacial surgery, whilst also completing an MBA while he was there. He describes Melbourne as an enormously fulfilling and a very happy time. John is plastic surgeon in chief at Boston Children's Hospital and has published widely on craniosynostosis, encephalocele, and cleft lip and palate. And he is a leader in innovative use of technology in complex surgical cases such as these. Allied to his clinical work, he advocates sustainability in healthcare and has pointed out that almost 10% of emissions in the US arise from healthcare and operating theatres account for 50 to 70% of waste across a hospital. He has worked to empower surgeons, anaesthetists, and obstetricians to incorporate environmental sustainability in their operating theatres. John is also a strong proponent of value-based healthcare, one of the most important topics in healthcare transformation today, and it's critical to improving the health outcomes of patients worldwide. Value means outcomes that matter to patients and the costs of achieving these outcomes. And he was instrumental in the development of international ICHOM patient outcome measures for cleft lip and palate. It is his work, however, in global surgery, which has led to his close relationship with RCSI. John is the director of the program in global surgery and social change at Harvard Medical School, and has worked closely with the Institute of Global Surgery here in RCSI to improve access to high quality, essential surgical care for underserved populations. Global surgery may be a new term, but not a new concept. Some of you in this room have worked in remote parts of the world. Some of you were born there as their parents worked, and some of you had your own children while working there. It is thanks to John and his colleagues in global surgery that global surgery is now recognized as a true specialty. And John co-chaired the Lancet Commission in Global Surgery in 2015. In the absence of surgical care, fatality rates are high for very common, easily treatable conditions, including appendicitis, fractures, and obstructed labor. In 2010, 17 million lives were lost from conditions needing surgical care, which is about one third of all deaths worldwide, and well surpasses the combined number of deaths from T HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria. It was John's work on this Lancet Commission which led to a World Health Organization resolution to increase access to emergency and essential surgical care in anesthesia. From his name, you would correctly guess that there are some Irish roots. And John has traced track his roots back to County Tipperary, in particular to a great by three grandfather who was born in 1784, by chance the same year this college was founded. Yeah. His wife Anne is with him tonight, is a paediatric dermatologist, and his eldest daughter is also following in the family footsteps and is in medical school. His two younger children are also following tradition and uh, both attend Notre Dame University. John is an innovator even in sport, partaking in rucking. And for the uninitiated, rucking has nothing to do with the rugby tomorrow. It's a low intensity interval training that involves walking with a weighted rucksack for a set distance. <laughs> but in more mainstream sport, John has actually run the Boston Marathon in 308. Mm. President, honours guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you will agree 
that Dr. John Mira is an extremely accomplished surgeon, an advocate for global surgery, and is most worthy of the honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the highest honour this college can bestow. I, John Mara, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavor to promote the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. By virtue of my office as president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Sincere congratulations to all our new honorary fellows. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal proceedings. If I could please ask you to be upstanding for the outward procession.